Bloody Sunday. People want our blood. Glad after the comments about Bronny possibly playing with the Heat or the Hurricanes, LeBron possibly turning to Miami. 954 texts in, you two are on Quaaludes. Oh, my God. Listening to this makes me want to bomb it. LOL. He's joking. Or she's joking. Please keep LeBron and his family away from South Florida. Please keep Ronnie away from the Miami Hurricanes. I don't want him or his fraudulent father anywhere near us. Yo, get over it, man. Yeah. Stop bitching. Y'all a bunch of Cody crybabies. Y'all sound like a bunch of Heat crybabies right now or South Florida crybabies. Strong it's been feelings. It's been 10 years already. Get over it. Strong Stop acting feelings. like a jilted ex-girlfriend or ex-boyfriend. Well, maybe this will make it better. Recently, LeBron James on a podcast talking to J.J. Redick. I know, Vlad, you were listening to this the other day. I think it's one of the best uh, podcasts out there. If you love basketball, if you want to know, like, the the intricacies of the game and why certain calls are you know certain calls are called why they run certain offensive sets how to defend those sets it's been if you're a basketball geek yeah this is it this is this is this is the podcast well jj reddick asked lebron james really was a chris bosh question and how the dynamic with bosh and how things changed and how it wasn't right away and lebron james didn't so much talk chris bosh he gushed about Coach Spo. Obviously, my first year there, you know, played great basketball, got all the way to the finals, losing the finals. I play like shit. Spo is the reason why we were a better team and our team was more assembled properly. That summer, he went to Oregon and hung out with Chip Kelly. Oh, interesting. He, he when we lost to Dallas, he went to Oregon and hung out with Chip Kelly and learned to spread offense and tried to figure out if he could translate that to basketball. And don't know the super conversations that him and Chip had, but I know when he came back to us, he knew in order for us to reach our potential, one, I had to be fucking 10 times better than I was in that previous June finals, but Chris Bosh had to go to the five. And CB being who he is, there was no pushback. There was no pushback. He knew in order for us to reach our potential that CB would have to go to the five. And we had to spread. We had to, he had to start working on his corner three faithfully every day after practice. Corner three every day after practice. We're going to post you up. We're going to get you your elbow catches. The offense is going to run through you at times. But in order to bring, you know, the Tyson Chandlers out of the paint, in order to bring the Roy Hibberts out of the paint, in order to bring Tim Duncan out of the paint at times, in order to bring Kevin Garnett out of the paint, you got to hit these corner threes. You got to at least be a threat. And Spo, Spo knew it. he had that. He had that vision. He went and learned. He said the way I. He said the way I coached in that finals versus Dallas, unacceptable. I told myself the way I played, unacceptable. And he came back with vengeance, and I was all I, I was locked in from, from start to finish. But it was Spo. It was Spo. It was Spo. It was Spo. Is he paving the way back to Miami? Him, Bronny, the James Gang. By the way, nine five four. If you got Quaaludes, you know, let me know. Interesting though. Now, first of all, that's extremely interesting that Spo goes to Chip Kelly and learns from a football coach the spread offense. And pulls Chris Bosh out to get the big men out of lane. That's great. It's that's great stuff. Mm -hmm. But it's great also. LeBron James is basically saying, "Spo's a genius. Yeah. I respect the man. I love the man." And he's had nothing but high praise for for Spo for like the last forever. But I've known that any interview where there's mention of Miami, he's always given Spo the props and love that uh, that he deserves. And it's 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 it seems like. Whatever beef them there might have been has been or whatever, you know, it's been thought out, man. Whatever the the the, the coldness has been thought out. I don't know what the situation with him and Rouse is. That's but that, that, yeah. But also you gotta figure LeBron James, Pat Riley's and Pat Riley, they're not rookies in this game. They understand sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. You gotta let bygones be bygones. But really, right there, that was LeBron James gushing and glowing and loving what Eric Spolster does as far as a coach. I mean, there's no other way to put it. It's not a crazy idea, folks. It's not. It's I, It's because it's either this. He's going to be drafted by a team, and he might go to the G League, whatever. 
But business wise and personnel wise, look, if you have a chance to bring that man back, I don't care what you say. He could be 40. He's still one of the top 10 players in the league. He's still, still eating people up. Still eating. Still eating. Still top 10. And if you're a team that's close, division, you got knocked out in the second round, you got knocked out in the conference finals. I mean, you, you know. Can I, can I ask you another question, Vlad? When you think about any team in the NBA, the one team you would name in the NBA that can develop players that are either late in the draft or undrafted, what team is the best, the best at developing young players who are A, either late in the draft or B, undrafted? Yeah, you, you know, it's about the heat culture. It's about the heat culture. He LeBron James. He's part of it. He, he LeBron James. Years. Eric Spolster, who we know LeBron James respects a lot. You heard it right there. Pat Riley, who knows how to construct a team. A team that, let's be honest, the past couple of years has been a step away. LeBron James is a big step. He's a major step. And it seems like he's all for playing for Eric Spolstra. And I'm thinking Eric Spolstra is all for coaching LeBron James again. If he's going to leave L.A., because it's really, I listen, man, it's tough to leave Los Angeles. Just I understand. But if, there, if there's a place you leave. But if there's a place you leave, you'll go back. It's a place that you've either been at or been to before. So you can either go back to Cleveland or go back to MIA. You ain't going to Charlotte. You're not, You're going, not going to, to Charlotte. City. You're not going to Charlotte. You're not going to that. But there's other teams. Like, listen. I think, Portland. I think if you're New York, I think if you're Dallas, I think if you're Philadelphia, I think Ooh. if you're Miami, Ooh. I even think if you're Orlando, you need to consider that. If you're a team that is starting or has had playoff success or seen the playoff and you 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 think you're one of the top eight teams in the league and you want to take that next step, he's a free agent, so you're not giving up assets. Mm -mm. And if you have a draft pick, and it's a late draft pick, mm -hmm. first round, late first round, or early second round. Yeah. And Pat Riley, if you're watching on YouTube, I'm pointing to my wrist. That clock is ticking. What are you going to do? Sounds as illogical. Sounds logical to it's me. It's just as logical that you go ahead, take a flyer on Bronny, get him into heat culture, maybe develop him. LeBron James. Likes Eric Spolstra. Eric Spolstra knows how to coach LeBron James. You've been one step away. Remember, you went to the finals last year. Hmm. And like you said, no draft capital has to be used other than LeBron James' part. No. You've got a free agent. And maybe even LeBron takes a little bit of a, a cut because he wants to play with his son. Why not? Wow. Now, and if, you, and if you don't think, if he wants to go play, if he feels like he needs another year, University of Miami? Yeah. Maybe do maybe do the whole juniors program. You go to the University of Miami for a year, get your feet wet in the area, get a feel for it, get to know the program a little bit better in the, in the heat. I like it. 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 Bring Bron and Bronny to Miami. Bring I like the it. James gang back. Bring the James family back the to the only South Florida. Who, the now the only people you have to sell, Pat Riley, who we don't know where he stands on this. I don't think you have to sell much, bro. And the fan base that's turned their back eh, on LeBron the James. Base. Man, the fan base will be back here buying all the number six jerseys back again. You can get out of here, bro. <laughs> all right? Come on, please. You kidding me? You kidding me? I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. <laughs> Welcome back. Be yeah, yeah, Miami. Bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. They hate him, and then they'll they'll be a, you know what? This game, this game. There'll be another, uh, there'll be another uh, party again, and he was like, oh, I can't guarantee you one or two, but I'll give you one. I'll give you one. <laughs> yeah, if he can give you one, you'll take it. It's worth he'll everything. Take it. You haven't won a title in eleven years, and trust me, take it from a guy who hasn't seen. I listen to by the, my the last time my team won, I was even created. Yeah. Right. I wasn't even a gleam in my Long daddy's eyes. The Knicks won. I wasn't oh. even a thought. My my sister was. That was it. Hey, as a Pelicans fan, can we win a playoff series? Never been to the finals. Yeah, I'd like that. By the way, this would be the smartest wordplay. And we talked about wordplay yesterday. We'll talk about it in the next segment, too. LeBron gets out, uh, introduced to Miami, walks out on stage. Instead of not one, not two, he just goes, see on Biscayne. You'll see me because it has double meaning because that's where the Caseya Center is, but it also has the mean that's where the parade's gonna be. See you on Biscayne, LeBron. See you on Biscayne. Saying. I'm just saying. 